In this lesson on how to use the new input system, we're going to be going over how to now move the player object with the Unity events that we set up in the last video. All right, so in this lesson, we're gonna cover a pretty major difference between the new input system and the old input system. To demonstrate the difference, I'm gonna open up my player controller script. Now with the old input system, it was all based on the input class. And a lot of times if you wanted something to happen when Unity detected a player input, you could just put the thing that you wanted to happen inside an if statement with the condition of some input. For example, I could type if input.getMouseButton down and pass in a zero for left click. Then inside this if statement, I could do something like debug.log fire. And the only reason why this works is because it's all contained within the update function. And so in every single frame, we're checking to see if the player has pressed the left mouse button. This also means that if I were to remove down from my get mouse button down, we would then fire every single frame that I'm holding the mouse button down. But with the new input system, since it uses action events, we have certain functions that are triggered as the player gives their input. And so these functions aren't being executed every single frame. This can be demonstrated when I play my project. If I were to press and hold the spacebar, you can see that we get a value of one for the spacebar being pressed. Then when I release the spacebar, we get a value of zero. Now if this was happening in the update function, as I'm holding the spacebar, you would think I would most likely get a couple hundred instances of these debug messages. But instead, using action events, I've only gotten the value of one twice and the value of zero once. Now because of this difference in how often these two systems are executed, it requires us to change from a continuous control system to more of what I will call a toggle control system. So let's go back to my player control script and I'll show you what I mean. To illustrate what I mean, we'll use the movement of our player controller. Once again, with the old system, if I were to move my player object, I could do something like if input dot get key, then key code, and we'll say D for if I wanted to move the player to the right. Then all I would have to do to move the player is get my character controller dot move and pass in a vector three dot right, then times some speed value. Now because this is a continuous control system, it means that as I press and hold the D key, my character will then move to the right at a constant speed, and this code will be executed every single frame. With the new input system and our function that's being executed when the action is sent, all we can really do is read in the value change. So here I have a variable called walk input, and I'm setting it equal to context.read value, and we're looking for a float. Since my walk action is a 1D axis with the A key and the D key binded to it, this value can either be a negative one, a zero, or a positive one, depending on whether I'm pressing the A key, the D key, or no key at all. Now at this point, it wouldn't do us any good to execute a similar line of code in this function as this line of code will only be executed once every time there's a change in the input value. So instead, you want to have a separate function, such as this function here called apply movement, which takes our character controller component and calls the move function, and we're passing in a new vector 3 that is built from our x movement speed, which is dependent on our walk input variable, a y movement speed, and zero. You'll then want to call this function inside an update or fixed update function. And so while we're still continuously applying the movement to our character, we're no longer continuously checking for the player's input. Where normally before you would have to have an if statement to check for the player's input, the new system gives you those inputs as a value. And so you can have the value determine the speed of the player. 
Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure that you give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos just like this one, then make sure that you hit the subscribe button so that you could be up to date on all our latest content. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.